This podcast is brought to you in part by PNP Games, your online source for everything video games. Visit their website at pnpgames.com or at one of their three retail locations in Winnipeg, Manitoba. On this episode of the Nintendo Pulse podcast, we're going to be talking Mario Kart 8, Pushmo World, and Jungle Badges Don't Care. All right, everybody, and welcome to the Nintendo Pulse Podcast. This is episode number 81, and we're late. As always, I'm your host, Lloyd Hannison. <laughs> and joining me, as always, Stephen Munn. Stephen, how the heck are you, man? I'm doing great, Lloyd. How about you? I am... I'm, I'm tired, man. You know, since the last time we recorded a show, I, I bitched and moaned about soccer taking over the life doing it every day some weekend makeup games well i'm now the assistant coach for my daughter's team so now i have extra practices and and meetings and other stuff to do along with it so i'm pretty much working 12 hour days and then doing more stuff on the weekend so because of that in the last like nine days i've had a total a grand total of two hours to play video games and that was for watchdogs and other days, I'm going to bed at like 9.30 at night and passing out. Like, it's not that I want to go to bed early. It's just I can't stay awake. So things have been really crappy gaming-wise. Um, but it's been really fun actually coaching and uh, teaching my daughter how to play the game and, and everybody else on the team. And she scored two goals tonight, which was the first time oh, she's great. ever scored. So she's uh, she's listening to her dad and uh, doing what I used to do when I used to play soccer. And uh, that was really awesome and, and super rewarding. But man, am I tired. I am so exhausted. So what do you say we jump right into the show, man? Sure, let's do it. Let's, All right, well, uh, it's almost midnight here, so yeah, it's like, <laughs> let's do it. We're also two hours later than we normally record because of mm. things. Um, so it's like ten thirty central here. We usually record at eight thirty central. So yeah, it's it's a little bit late. So um, Stephen, before we jump into it, how have you been? Let's talk to you. It's not all about me, Stephen. It's all so about you. <laughs> I've been great. I've been still keeping busy. Um, you know, I've got my singing lessons going. Lots of cooking and grilling and. Um, a little bit of gaming, but not much. Uh, mostly sing star and stuff like that. So <clears throat> still practicing the singing. Nice. Um, and just you know, socializing and you know, just doing doing the living thing. Lots and lots of reading. Living also. is good. Living is mm -hmm. good. It's much better than the alternative. So yes. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Beats getting uh, poked in the eye with a sharp stick. Yes. Ex exactly. Exactly. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, let's uh, let's jump right into to that the gaming par portion of your of, of the life of Steven. So, Steven, okay. what have you been playing? Uh, mostly, uh, as I said, SingStar. I use the SingStar digital app on the PS3 that they released a couple of years ago, um, which was something that I wanted them to release for a really long time that lets you run SingStar right off the hard drive on your <laughs> PS3 for free. I, I still remember how pissed off people got when it showed up on everybody's um, at Cross Media Bar. Because it was a, it was a push out with a firmware update, and oh, was it the amount of anger that I heard online with people complaining? I was like, I don't want this icon on my on my thing. It's stupid. And eventually, down the road, they had to pull it off. So if you hadn't run it, um, or mm -hmm. it, they gave you the option to delete it or whatever, so remember that kerfuffle. Um, wow. But, uh, yeah, people are people are people are people. Yeah. They're fun. They're so much fun. Kyle K says excited for PS4 Sing Star. Sing Star. I don't have a PS4. <clears throat> um, so I have no interest in that. As long as they keep releasing songs for the PS3 uh, version, I have no reason to, the cool, you know, to to change platforms. The cool thing about PS4 SingStar is you're going to be able to uh, bind your smartphone to your PS4, um, connect wirelessly, and then use that as your microphone. So you don't need to have like a USB dongle and, and microphones that may or may not um, have like busted connections because if you, if you use them for a while, they get a little bit noisy. So you yeah. can actually just um, plug in um, your, you know, not even plug in. You just turn on your phone, connect wirelessly to SingStar, and then you can use the uh, app that they will be distributing. So you can just sing into your phone and uh, do it that way. That'll be pretty cool. How could the audio quality through my phone even come close to, e even if my SingStar microphones were half broken? 
<laughs> well, the, it sound terrible. Well, the six star mics are mono and um, very okay. low bit rate. Anyway, that's the sampling that it that it takes in. So um, you'd probably get a better quality microphone from your phone just because oh. it you're talking. It's a thing to talk into all the time, and it has to be um, it, it has to be aware of environmental noise and other people talking near you. So it's mm. really good at isolating the people that are right in front of the microphone. Um, I mean, the, the mics that come with, with SingStar are, they're, they're like dynamic mics. They're not really a condenser mic or anything. So mm. that's the, that's when you get a lot of really good sound is, is from microphones like that. Like this one here, um, this is a really good mic. The SingStar mics are decent for that because it, it's, it's, it's just getting like very low uh, bit rate, low fidelity um, voice from there. Not to say that they're oh, bad okay. microphones. They're just, they're nothing super special. Um, but the microphone in your, in your phone is, is really good. Like there's, oh, okay. there's podcasting no apps idea. for the iPhone, which um, a lot of pro podcasters use and they just use the, the built-in mics that are on their, their iPhone to, to do it. Hmm. So it'll, it'll be good. It'll be, uh, it'll be awesome. I, I'm super looking forward to that because we've taken up karaoke at my house. Um, so it was my birthday on Sunday, and we spent the whole evening karaokeing as a family. It was uh, it was pretty damn awesome. So cool. uh, I look forward to doing a lot more of that on the PlayStation Four. Okay, yeah, I'll have to keep an eye on that. Then I didn't even know if they had mentioned anything along the lines of a PS Four Sing Star. Do Do you know if it's supposed to be? Uh, well, you know what? This is not even close to a Nintendo topic. Um, <laughs> well, you can ask your question. I can answer it. Um, do you know if they're if they're planning to make it reverse compatible so that you can use the PS3 and PS2 discs on there like you um, can with the PS3 version? I don't know. I don't know if there's any way that you're going to be able to unlock the songs on the Sing Store. Um, mm -hmm. It is going to have Sing Store support. So I believe if you've purchased DLC tracks, they will yeah. they will be cross compatible. I'm not sure about the discs, which would be okay. unfortunate. I have like the Sing Star Queen um, and some of the other Sing Star discs and they're, they're, i have every i have everything that they've released for ps3 and ps2 every right. single one of them even country sing star country oh why do you use because it as a coaster to put your drink while you sing other songs is that what <laughs> because it's more songs to sing <clears throat> yeah, and I occasionally so. i get country fans over who want to sing country songs oh, okay well that, so, there, there you go um i just love having the huge library no announcement yet that would be mm -hmm. really awesome if that was the case um, yeah. Even if it's just you have to stick your disc in for it to be unlocked or whatever while you're playing the game. Um, that would be yeah, that's how it is on the PS3. I have to put the PS2 disc in and then oh, we'll it spin actually, it up and it shows all, it brings them all up. Oh, I didn't know it did that. Um, mm -hmm. That's cool. I'll have to try yep. that because I got, I got the, I bought a whole bunch of SingStar discs um, when we started getting into the whole karaoke thing. So I'll have to look into that. Okay. Yeah, it, it works great. You just press uh, select, press the select button on the <coughs> controller and it pops up this screen that says, in, insert a SingStar disc and you can put in a PS2 or a PS3 disc and it'll bring it up even if you have a PS3 that is not backwards compatible. Mine is but it doesn't have to be in order for it to read the videos off the PS2 discs. Cool. Well, thanks for that mm -hmm. tip, Stephen. I didn't even know that. Yeah, you're welcome. Sweet. So uh, besides um, singing, um, what you been doing? Mm -hmm. You've been... Um, you've been uh, Disco Zoo. You've been uh, shoveling, on my phone. shoveling um, manure at the zoo. Yep. Collecting coins. Yep, yep. I got all the diamond trophies for all the uh, animals now. Nice. Um, so now I'm just waiting for them to release another update with more stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if there's one coming or, or what. Nice. Um, no big deal. And that's, uh, and that's it. That's uh, all I've been gaming. That's the only games I've been gaming. All, all the games that, that, have, that are fit to game for mm -hmm. Stephen Munn. Awesome. Yep. Well, thanks for so that. Now you can tell me how terrible Watch Dogs is. Go ahead. Uh, so I've, I've been playing Watch Dogs. Like I said, I'm mm -hmm. only about two hours in and one and a half of those hours was streamed uh, on the channel last night. So I stayed up super late, even though I was falling asleep at the controller. Um, I decided to do that. And uh, it's it's fun, man. It's it's everything that I hoped it would be. Um, I wasn't getting crazy, super hyped for it. Um, I know a lot of people that were crazy hyped. They um, they played it and they sent me texts the next morning. They're like, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think it's what I kind of hoped it would be. And I'm like, well, do you not like the game or is this a letdown, an emotional letdown because of how hyped you were? And after chatting for a bit, they're like, yeah, you know what? I think it was just overhyped, um, which yeah. I think is is going to be the problem with this game. Like it's it, it, it's uh, it's a GTA-like game, an open world sandboxy kind of thing. It's getting eights, nines, and sevens, uh, so it's not a bad game, but there's a lot of people that thought it was going to be the next big thing that everybody will love and it will be everything for everybody. 
which just isn't isn't the case. But uh, for what it's worth, I'm I'm digging it. I love the hacking stuff. I've always been into that kind of uh, that kind of culture when it comes to magazines or uh, or comics or movies. That type of like hacker subculture was always super interesting to me. Um, so a game set in that world is really cool. Um, even though people are like, oh, it's just a one button hack. It's like, well, script kitties have one button hacks as well. So it's not yeah. super far fetched. Um, other than the fact that the whole world can be controlled from your phone because of the network that runs the entire city of Chicago in this game. But I mean, every game you have to take some, um, some, some mental leaps to uh, accept yeah. the, uh, the story, but it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, driving is horribly busted. Like the physics model is just weird. Uh, but once you get into that mindset that you can actually hit a truck head on and it will go flying about um, 200 feet the opposite way and your car will still be drivable. Once you can figure out that that is going to happen, um, it's not too, too bad. Um, but yeah, uh, two hours in, it's it's a good game. Um, two hours out of 100 hours worth of content that are in the game. So I'm nowhere near um, close to anything uh, as far as forming an opinion on it. I'm just having a heck of a lot of fun with what I've played. Cool. Glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, I hope it's got some issues going on. Yeah, I hope to uh, I hope to get in and play a little bit more. It has a really cool iOS and Android app uh, called CTOS. So even if you don't have the game, you can jump in and you can mess with other people that are playing the game live. Um, so mm. you can spawn helicopters and try to track them down and, and, and blow up their cars or shoot them and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, although Ubisoft is forcing everybody to use their uh, their network. Um, and it's like you play and it's not so good it was a little bit overloaded on release day um and it's yeah. still having a lot of problems um yeah i don't know um a buddy of mine uh, texted um ubisoft pr to ask them about the wii u version of watchdogs because they mm -hmm. they haven't said anything about it yet just that it hasn't been canceled uh, but they haven't said anything mm -hmm. about it and apparently the the message from PR is um, we don't have anything to announce right now, but uh, you'll be interested to check out some of the stuff we talk about at E3. So it's like, okay, are we interested to listen to the things you're talking about at E3, which are other games, or are you going to have <laughs> news on Watch Dogs? So typical PR um, kind of response. So hopefully sure. at E3 we'll get some some news on Watch Dogs because. Um, yeah, I mean, Watch Dogs would be kind of the perfect game for the Wii U with the gamepad right in front of you. Um, it just seems like it would, it would fit really well. So, um, Although I'm playing it on PS4 and it looks like it's just unbelievable looking in some areas, um, I, it would be still a fun game for people that have a, only a Wii U and don't have any of the uh, other next-gen consoles. Sure. Cool, but that's that's sadly it. Um, other than I picked up a couple of Vita games um, to play um, while I'm on break or whatever. So I've been playing through some of those. So nothing super fun. Lego um, Lego the movie the game is one of the ones, and it's horrible. <laughs> it is horrible because it's not a Lego game. It's a collection of mini games because it's a port of the Ugh. DS version. So you, if you, I don't know if you've played any of the, the recent Lego games on the Nintendo DS. Um, no. They're basically a world where it, all the, the new Lego games on the consoles are all open worlds, ex explore the world, choose the levels you want, stuff like that. Yeah, build stuff and all that. Yeah, these games are kind of like you have 15 levels and each of the levels has 15 sub-levels and you go to a sub-level and you can complete it in anywhere from 30 seconds to five minutes depending on what the level is. Mm. Um, and that's what the Vita version of the Lego movie game the, movie, uh, the game, the game, the movie is, which is not what I thought it would be. And I... It was on sale for 20 bucks, so I, I bit the bullet and bought it. And then it turns out um, it was a one-day platinum, um, and it was uh -oh. terrible. So I'm I'm not not liking it, um, but I still do want to play this game on my, my um, PlayStation 4. So I'll be picking that one up eventually on the PS4 because I do dig uh, Lego games. So, But that's about it. Cool. That's it. That's it. What do you say we move into the, the rest of the show, man? Sure, let's do that. All right, notable releases this week. Um, releasing in one hour in my city. It's already released for a lot of people and not released yet mm -hmm. for others. Um, and that is yep. Mario Kart 8. Yes. Finally, the the game that will save the Wii U um, <laughs> has cometh. Uh, and it, It's it, about time. Yeah. So I, we joke, of course, but 
Yeah. Um, the game is out. Um, places in my city are, are doing midnight launches, which is surprising for um, for a Nintendo game. Um, that usually doesn't mm-hmm. happen. They save that for the, the gun gun, bang bang, shooty shooty games. Um, so it's kind of really interesting to see that for, uh, for a Wii U game. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go to the midnight launch just because I don't think I'll have time to play it until the weekend, maybe. Even if I yeah. even might not even have time on the weekend. We'll see. So I'll, I'm going to try to pick it up tomorrow or sometime on the weekend and it makes me really sad that i'm not going to be there for the midnight launch and taking mm-hmm. this game home and playing it because yeah. of real life i'm i'm yeah. old officially i'm I'm, a, I'm an official old person that has real life responsibilities take my time yeah. away from gaming I it's a shame isn't it you I, get all grown up i don't you like have this. The disposable income I, I but you don't have the time anymore i don't i don't like it um i really really don't like it so mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that'll be uh, what I have to deal with. So, Mario Kart Eight is out. Um, go In some places. It was out a week ago. Yeah, you by were, accident. You were talking uh, <laughs> that that some Canadians can't read, um, and there's some Canadian retailers that were selling it about a week ago. Yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of people. The um, the uh, Meverse community for Mario Kart Eight sprung up. Uh, I think last weekend, and people were posting videos of themselves playing it. Uh, themselves playing it. You know, little video clips. So. Uh, it's it's completely out of control. There were lots and lots and lots and lots of people, mostly uh, Canadians. That's funny. Who were were playing Mario Kart Eight? But we're way so before they but were, we're so polite. To. We would never take advantage of the system. Oh no, it's uh, that's not even what I meant. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just uh, you know, another broken street date, another major broken street date on a Nintendo game um, after the. The Pokemon XY one last year that was uh, such a oh, yeah. issue for Nintendo. I remember some stores actually got sanctioned by Nintendo, where they were mm. getting um, they were getting less pre order stuff, or they were getting stuff shipped to them the day after release. Like there was there was a lot of fallout from that. Um, mm. So it is kind of funny to see it happen again. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they do that with this too. Yeah, um, I, I, somehow I don't think that is going to happen. Um, yeah, just because Nintendo um, released this game a month ago to reviewers, like um, mm-hmm. Foreman was playing this game a month ago and talking yeah. about it. Um, so it's been out for a while. Um, reviews started posting about two weeks ago. So yeah, once the reviews are out, uh, I don't think they, they really care too much that people are playing the game. But yeah, um, yeah, well, yeah. And it's been reviewing pretty well. So <clears throat> Yeah, what is what's the Metacritic now? Do you have a? Can, are you uh, I haven't to... checked it recently. Let me have a look. Yeah, because um, when I um, when I first looked into it, it was um, sitting at about like a, a ninety or an eighty-seven, I think, or something like that. It was doing really, really well. Um, but it's not even listed on the as a new game. Hmm. Um, let me go over to Wii U. It is not listed under Wii U. Let me see. Here we go. Coming soon, Mario Kart 8. Metascore is 89. 89. Generally favorable reviews. So it's gone up a little bit. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I guess uh, I, I guess not all the, the main sites have posted the review yet. Um, mm. But, um, but yeah. Weird. I mean, it's a 9 out of 10. That's pretty pretty damn good for uh, for a game. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. I really, really do hope that this pushes uh, a million new Wii's we use into the market. Like... Yeah, I think it should do okay. It's probably the only game that has a chance to to do that, unfortunately. So I, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, I hope it does, because mm-hmm. it'd be really good for for Nintendo to sell some consoles and and not be uh, kind of the laughing stock on uh, on I don't know Neo Gaff and and other uh, internet message boards. So yes, <clears throat> I would not uh, would I, I would not uh, mind if uh, they sold a couple million more Wii U's this month uh, because of this game. That would be excellent. That'd be really, really good. Awesome. All right. Well, let's uh, move on. Let's get into the news. So, okay. um, first up, Stephen, this is your story. Uh, Pushmo World. What uh, What do you have to yeah. say about that? Pushmo is a game for the 3DS. So, is this just a sequel? Mm-hmm. This is a uh, Pushmo <coughs> game for uh, Wii U. Very nice. So it's Pushmo in HD. Um, All the dizzles. They got got yeah. three of them. It's it's gonna uh, be good. June nineteenth. I guess it comes out in North America. Hmm. Um, and from the 28th of May to the 13th of June, Pushmo on 3DS will be $4.69 and Crashmo will be $5.99. Um, hmm. And I think that they're... Uh, let's see. 
uh, and Pushmo World is going to be nine ninety nine. Nice. Oh wow, that's that's not as expensive as I thought it might be. Yeah, that's surprising. <clears throat> that's very cool. Um, so if you guys don't know, Pushmo was a franchise that launched, uh, I guess, a couple of years ago, maybe mm. nine or eighteen months ago, something like that. And it was basically a puzzle game where you had a little what looked like kind of like Tetris pieces that you could push in and out to um, to get up and, and, and get on get into the puzzle and solve the puzzle and save the people. And it was cutesy and you had this little fat guy that fluttered his wings and or his arms when he was falling. Like it was just really, really hard to describe. Yeah. Yeah. It was just it was a cute puzzle like tricky puzzle game and then yeah. crash mode came out which was even more um difficult like push mode was really difficult when you got to some of the later levels and then crash yeah. mode came out and it just kicked your brain right in right in its pants um and and that was a lot of fun it's really interesting to see this game come out for the wii u mm -hmm. um not because it's a wii u game but because it's coming out really soon and it wasn't saved for an e3 announcement yeah yeah, I guess they they figured it wouldn't be a big, particularly big deal, so just drop it out. And I yeah. think that's fair. Yeah, I guess so. It would be it would have been cool for. I love when people do the. Yeah, this is our new game, and look at it now, and it's available today. Go download it. <laughs> um, it would have been cool for something like that for yeah. for this game. It's, I mean, it's not a it's not a, a mega blockbuster, mega ton bomb uh, exploding around the internet uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but it's mm -hmm. still a really cool new franchise for Nintendo, and to, to yeah. have them say, yeah, we have uh, the Wii U version, and boom, go download it today. It'll be it'll be out there. Of course, they'd have to release it a little bit early, but um, right. that, that would have been kind of neat as well. Yeah, it, it's, um and, you know, Pushmo is a cool game. I mm -hmm. had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Before it got too hard, and I said, "No, nah, I think I've had enough." <laughs> I've stopped having fun. <laughs> I will. I will move on now. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, Pushmo World uh, coming really, really soon. So if you are itching to play something else on your Wii U, um, you'll be able to do that um, very, yes. very soon on uh, a great game, a great puzzler called Pushmo World. Yes. Sweet. All right, moving on. Uh, we're getting into some Mario Kart. Uh, stuff so the game comes out today uh, or tomorrow or uh, a couple days ago depending on what part of the world you're in hey canon mm -hmm. shane you're living in the future that game's already out over there in australia or is it to come out after ours he's he's from the future so i get to ask these questions um but uh, nintendo announced along with um some other stuff that we'll get into that they are going to be releasing a really weird thing it is um well Let's, let's you said Mario Kart again. Did I say Mario Kart? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, this is a Smash Brothers thing. So yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm super tired and I can't really think straight. So uh, excuse my misspeaking. Um, mm. This is a really weird thing. So Smash Brothers is a huge game. It's played on. Um, it's played on tournaments all the time, uh, all around the world. It's one of one of the staples for uh, competitive fighting games. Uh, but everybody loves playing with the GameCube controllers because that is how they learned to play the game and that is how they continued to play it um, on the Wii. You could hook up your WaveBird. It also had, um, it had ports for the GameCube controllers. And if you go to a tournament, no one's using a Wiimote to play um, Smash Brothers. Well, some are, but the people that are winning are the ones that are using the GameCube controllers. Well, Nintendo just announced today that they will be coming out with an adapter it's a usb adapter it has two usb plugs for some strange reason you plug it into the front of your wii u and it has four gamecube ports on it so you can plug in your gamecube controllers whether they're a wired old school weird looking gamecube controller or whether you have a wave bird which is probably one of my favorite controllers of all time mm. you could plug in the the transceiver and then put some fresh batteries in your WaveBird and use your WaveBird with the Wii U version of Smash Brothers. Um, that's cool. I don't know. Does that excite you at all, Steven? Um, mainly for its potential. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I'd like to be able to play more games with wired controllers. Yeah. Uh, but all of that has to be coded in. Yeah, exactly. You know? 
my my hope we talked about in the in the pre-show is that this mm-hmm. means that GameCube uh, virtual console titles are next um, next in line. That would be really yes. awesome. Be able to play yeah. um, Super Mario Sunshine or Mario Kart Double Dash. Maybe a lot of games that people didn't get access to for whatever reason um, mm-hmm. on 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 the GameCube. But to be able to play them on the Wii U, that would be really really awesome. So mm-hmm. very cool. Um, it was just kind of. Stealth announced it was tweeted out by Nintendo's um, Twitter account and it's like, oh, do you like to play games with controllers? Boom, look at this. You'll be able to do this with Smash Brothers. And that's really all the information. I've read yep. articles on IGN. I've read articles on various other websites and they don't have any more info other than we asked Nintendo to comment and they didn't have one. So, yep. I don't know. Another weird thing and something else that you think would be saved for E3. So, yeah. What do you think? Does do you think this means that Nintendo has a huge E three um, announcement to be made? Like, are there going to be a lot of really interesting things announced, or does Nintendo just not care anymore uh, about E three? They're already not holding a big media conference; they're just doing their right. own thing. Maybe this is just part of the new Nintendo. It's like, all right, here you go. You can download the thing and play with the stuff, and here you go. And we don't need to tell you all about it on one day of the year. We'll tell you whenever we're damn ready to do to do that. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's that's what this whole thing's about. Yeah, it's. I think with Nintendo, you never know. <laughs> I don't yeah. think they have anything, you know, useful coming. Yeah, I would. Um, I would highly doubt it. But yeah, you never yeah. know. You never know. But you know, you can hope that they, they probably. <laughs> saw this and and maybe they saw this in pushmo world as things that really wouldn't be particularly interesting to people sure at e3 and that's probably true um maybe if this was along with you know like you said with a gamecube virtual console then maybe it would have been a worthwhile yeah or maybe this is the pre-announcement teasing the e3 announcement of the virtual console yeah maybe uh, who knows i doubt who knows? It. i doubt it i highly doubt probably it. probably not but yeah. maybe mm-hmm. i like to say maybe in these sure. instances because we don't know sure we'll probably have forgotten about this uh completely by the time uh, e3 rolls around and so will <laughs> nintendo yeah it'll be mm-hmm. one of their their great peripherals that is never never um used yeah. any any other time except for that one thing just like the Lynx crossbow training gun attachment and yeah. the the voice uh, chat box that you used in Animal Crossing and no other game. <laughs> it'll yep. be it'll be something like that, I'm sure. Right. I think so, too. Cool. All right, well, let's move on. Let's get into actual Mario Kart thing. And I'm not saying Mario Kart when I mean Smash Brothers in this instance. Okay. Um, Japan has something really weird happened today. Um, it, Nintendo Japan announced that inside of Mario Kart 8, there will be a free D- a DLC package that you can download that gives you a Mercedes-Benz um, car in Mario Kart. So you, you can be Mario or any of the other players. And instead mm-hmm. of getting into your cart with choosing the wheels and choosing the parachute, you can just choose a Mercedes-Benz car. Um, yes. A, a GLA, Mercedes-Benz GLA. That's odd and not something that I would have ever expected to see, but Nintendo's right. trying new things. Um, they said that that was one of their focuses, Stephen, that they want to they wanna look for new partnership deals and new ways to get Nintendo out there in the world. And this seems like a good start. Yeah. But do you know what's even weirder than that? What's in that? their commercial for the new GLA, um, they have a... <laughs> They have a live action Mario character in that commercial. So the they, they they're racing through a world that looks like a Mario world. There's like statues and sand castle looking things and a Mario flagpole. And then the door opens on the GLA and out steps this big beefy Mario, like live action Mario with like this big fake nose and yeah. he's wearing the overalls, he's wearing the red shirt and the hat, and it's just like what? the heck <laughs> is that i i not since the days of the Mar- the nintendo cartoon network um shows with like captain n and all the other ones with just weirdly bastardized versions of all the characters in this thing have we seen uh, a, a nintendo mascot used in that way um yeah. Really, really, really bizarre. I, I don't know. Uh, the cool thing is it, um, it starts off with a, uh, like, 
Super the original Super Mario Brothers for the NES, um, World One One, and there's like a little pixelized eight uh, bit version of the GLA, and then Mario jumps into it and then drives through the world before they get into um, the rest of uh, the rest of the one where they show kind of the real world locations and then the live scary looking Mario dude uh, getting out of the car. So yeah, I I don't I don't know. Yeah, it sounds like a weird Japanese commercial to me. Yeah, and just like some crazy dude. He looks more like Wario than he looks like Mario. Mm. He just oh, that's, this, that is scary. Yeah, it's just weird face. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Bizarre. Bizarre marketing, but um, no word has come whether we'll get the uh, Mercedes-Benz uh, DLC for North America or if there will be some other tie-in with maybe a Ford um, or some other more American uh, vehicle than hmm. uh, Mercedes-Benz. Who knows? Okay. Is it just you at all, Stephen? You seem to be yeah, I mean, I, nonplussed I, about this at all. I, I, I saw the screenshot, and it just looks completely incongruous in the Mario Kart setting. <laughs> it, um, it does. <laughs> it's like somebody it bizarre. photoshopped it together. It, it looks like a fan mod look, to yeah. the, the Wii version of Mario Kart, because they throw all sorts of weird yeah. things into Smash Brothers and stuff. It's like someone just made the model and somehow hacked it into the game yeah it, it's <clears throat> the good it's thing it's an interesting idea and I, I like the idea of dlc cars and dlc drivers but that's the thing that that's what excites me is that yeah this shows that mario kart 8 is supporting dlc yes it, it, this yeah. might be the only one but the hooks <laughs> are there so maybe mm. this means that we'll be getting new levels, new battle modes, yes. new cars, new characters. And that I'd like excites to have me. them be gaming related. <clears throat> they don't have to be Nintendo only, but they could mm -hmm. at least be gaming related. Yeah, I, that, mean, that, I don't that, need that a Mercedes. Nice. And they don't have to be Sonic. Um, they could be other, other, sure. other franchises, not just sure. that one thing. Um, not that I hate Sonic. Don't mm -hmm. like Sonic, but I don't mm -hmm. hate Sonic. Uh, it would be nice right. to have other things in there. Like a Simon Belmont would be nice to be riding mm -hmm. a cart. Sure, sure. As a driver, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> That'd be really good. Yeah. Uh, although, what would he drive? Like a coffin mobile or something? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That, that's, there's so much potential there. I guess that would be Alucard then if, if he was in a coffin. Could have a Richter Belmont standing, you know, straight legged on top of a runaway stagecoach. That would be a nice <laughs> reference to. Could do that as well. To one. Castlevania game that almost nobody would get. It would be, be like, what is that? Why super... isn't he sitting in it? I don't understand. <laughs> Why is he standing on top? <laughs> Could be that. Oh, yeah. damn. I just closed my browser. So give me oh. a second to reopen everything. Um, yeah, it could be uh, could be that as well. That would be that would yeah. be very very interesting. So, yeah, yeah. weird tie-ins and DLC and who knows like what else. Like an ice else. cream truck, you know, an ice cream truck for Sweet Tooth. Yeah, that would be cool. From the uh, we probably won't see PlayStation branded. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like get, help us get all the PlayStation All Stars characters into into Smash Brothers and <laughs> sure. and Mario Kart. I mean, they're not sure. doing anything else now. Right, exactly. Just, just, certainly... Come on, come over, come over. We right, love a little you. sack boy, a little sack boy in there. <laughs> I saw. Have you seen those videos recently where people put um, f um, FPS tests where they run the game and they have special software that manages um, the frames per second, the amount of pixels being pushed, all that stuff. They they have like little bar graphs on the video. Have you ever seen that? Uh, no. Okay. Well, there's there's a thing that people do where they compare like the PlayStation Four and the Xbox One version of a game just to see the the actual resolution, the pixels pushed, yada yada yada. Oh, yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah. So I saw a funny one today for Mario Kart Eight. It's like mm -hmm. Mario Kart Eight on the Wii U, the PlayStation Four, and Xbox One. So they start with like <laughs> one one third of the screen with Mario Kart Eight running on on the Wii U, and then they open up the other two things, and they're just black squares. Um, so I had to, <laughs> I had to giggle, giggle at that as well. So. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, really, that's really, really good. Anyway, let's move on. Let's get into some Sonic news. Told you I didn't hate oh Sonic. My gosh, why not? Um, Sonic Boom, <laughs> the worst name for a, a next generation yes. version of the, a Sonic game, has added a new character. So for the first time in in a long time, they've added someone new that wasn't done in like the comic first or yeah. or, or in the TV show first. And this okay. is uh, a character called Styx. Yep. And she is a, uh, I think it's a she, it looks like a she. She mm -hmm. is a jungle badger. So not yeah. a honey badger, which would make sense for internet memes and uh, get those people talking. It's yeah. it's a jungle badger with um, 
tape around her boomerang and yeah. her I don't know hair on the side of her face is now tied with string for some odd reason bound yes. oddly on the side of her face so yes yeah there that's that's a sonic thing it's a nintendo related song thing because it is a nintendo exclusive so we can talk about it yes. here but yeah sticks sticks is a thing um, a thing that yes. you can look into yes this is my boom sticks <laughs> there you go that, that'll be her catchphrase it'll be yes uh, awesome and uh yeah like i said she has uh, everybody has the stupid tape uh, on them like even sonic has his gloves which are already perfectly white and not not t torn yeah. he has tape yeah. around them because that makes yeah. sense he's sporty um right and, and shoes yeah his shoes and shoes yeah and yeah. her boomerang has tape around it because yes you want less aerodynamics in your boomerang right. so you you tie it w around with random pieces of tape yes yeah you got to make sure that that boomerang looks nice and sporty it'll make it go faster yeah, it's like racing stripes. You put it, racing stripes on a car to make it go fast. You solved it. You solved. That's what the yes. tape is. It's racing stripe tape. It's the yes. it's the vinyl decals that you put it's on sports cars. There you go. Mm -hmm. It all makes sense now. Mm -hmm. um, do you know what else makes sense, Stephen? Uh, prob not much else. <laughs> not much else in this industry. How about uh, Pikmin three and the ability to control your Pikmin with a stylus okay. on the touchpad? Doesn't that make sense? Okay. Like that was the I, one thing I that I was com does. complaining about for Pikmin that you couldn't really use the gamepad for much else on the game. Like it was kind of like showed you your map, but you couldn't really do much with it. Um, a update has just come out for Pikmin three mm -hmm. that uh, gives you a new control method um, of using the stylus on the touchpad, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's a um, they can use the stylus and the gamepad's touchscreen to toss their Pikmin about. That's the that's the change. So it's when like I played the, uh, through, I used the combination where it was uh, where I used the Wii remote with the nunchuck and yeah. I used the gamepad as that's an what I app. Did too. Yep, and I did course plotting on the gamepad as well with the stylus before. Mm -hmm. But now with this one, you can actually use the stylus to throw your Pikmin, which would make it a little bit more playable. Like I tried playing on just the gamepad. Mm -hmm lasted five minutes and i said okay i'm gonna hate myself yeah. if i do this anymore so i switched over to wiimote nunchuck and it was it was a dream to play yeah yeah that's how i played through it's great it's kind of neat that um they're still going back and updating these games um and mm -hmm. it is a game that's included with the free game promotion with mario kart 8 um so that's probably yeah. part of the the reason they want people that download mario kart 8 to maybe have a better way of controlling it maybe people that haven't heard of pikmin before and they might not have a wiimote nunchuck kick it around um mm -hmm. that's pretty cool and um yeah so more more updates to wii u games which is a very un nintendo like thing to do usually they release the game and it's perfect and if you don't think it's perfect you just don't like nintendo stuff um right but, but now they're pushing out updates which is uh pretty cool yep yep all right cool and last uh, but not least today um a nintendo has set out or sent out a, a pr blast because um, there was talk about a month ago about how Nintendo is planning to claim all of the uh, the videos um, from Mario Kart 8. So when you publish a video to YouTube, you don't get to get ad revenue from it. Um, so mm -hmm. you have Let's Players, that, that is how they make a living. They record themselves playing a game, and they put ads on it, and um, they were really pissed off at Nintendo for claiming all of the Nintendo videos. Um, Nintendo's in their right to do it because it is their content. Um, even though the Let's Players are adding stuff to it, it's a little bit more than fair use because you're not using like a 30 second clip of something in a in a yeah. bigger thing. It, it is all the Nintendo game with just uh, a riff track over top of it essentially. Yeah. So that would be like the, the, the riff tracks people selling a copy of the movie with them dubbed over top of it there's no way that that would work because they yeah. would get sued um similar thing for this type of stuff well um that was met with a lot of criticism a lot of hate a lot of um, anger and venom being spit in nintendo's direction um so they came out uh, a couple days ago and said that they're announcing a program where they are going to do a revenue split so they were they're going to claim the videos but they are going to allow you to join an affiliate program so that you can have a uh, an ad share with Nintendo. 
not a not a terrible idea. Um, it, mm-hmm. It's good for Nintendo. They get a little bit of cash for their hard work, and the Let's Players will still get a lot of stuff as well. They'll get some cash um, for yeah. showing their playthrough and how they're cheating through some track on Mario Kart. Um, they found a, a, a glitch or whatever. They'll still get the views. Yeah. They'll still get some of the ads, but Nintendo will get a portion of that as well. Right. Sounds like the perfect way to do it. It, it's a, it seems like a reasonable compromise. Mm-hmm. Doesn't, uh, doesn't have Nintendo as an evil, evil corporation anymore. It's like, yeah, right. we made this thing. Um, we understand you want to make some money on it. So we'll give you the option to do that, even though it is our property. Um, seems like mm-hmm. a, a win-win solution for everybody. Um, yep. Not everybody's happy about that. There was still a lot of um, hate and anger thrown Nintendo's way. But Well, yeah. I mean, you know. unless they back down off it completely, people are still going to be complaining totally. to some extent. but. Yeah, and to those people, I say suck it up or play mm-hmm. games on another console and make yep. your money that Which way. Which they all pretty much are. Yep, so. exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yep. Cool. All right, well, that's going to about do it for episode 81 of the Nintendo Pulse podcast. Um, th- just wanted to do a quick show for you guys this week um, because I need to get to bed at some point. So uh, let us know what you think of the show. Head on over to vgpodcast.com and, and let us know. I'll put some music on while I do that. Uh, um, you can email us directly at vgpodcasts at gmail.com or you can call our voicemail line, which is area code 505 VG Podcasts. Stephen Munn, thank you yeah. for joining me yet again on a Nintendo Pulse podcast. Hey, it was fun. We should do this again. We should. Um, yeah. If, if I'm not dead. Sorry, what was that? Like most Thursdays, I like like most Thursdays, it would be would be a good idea. Yeah, as long as I'm not dead from exhaustion, we will do this again, mm-hmm. at at least once more, um, probably a lot more than once. So, right, you have my promise there, Stephen. Okay. <laughs> All right, everybody, <laughs> take it easy. Enjoy your Mario Kart Eight. Um, let us know if you want us to run a, a tournament. That would be kind of fun if you guys are interested in that stuff at all. Um, mm. But uh, until next time, take it easy, everybody, and enjoy your Nintendo games. Bye-bye. <laughs>